Thank you, Mark. Uh, an amazing amount of work that's going on. We've had an inspiring address from Phoebe. The chief executive has reported comprehensively on the affairs and the business of bird life during the past year. The next item on the agenda says my report. It's I'm not going to report. I promise I'm going to keep you for only a short while. And the two things that I wish to do. One is a report back of sorts. And secondly, I wish to make a few other additional comments. But before I do that, I can see what's happening here. Most of you boys and girls were up at 4.30 this morning. I can see the levels of concentration dropping. I want to make sure that you're listening, so I'm going to do something. It might irritate the chief executive, I don't care. I want to make sure that you're listening to me. So, whenever I utter the word fabulous, I want to hear 253 Adidas in response. <laughs> when I use that word fabulous, I want to hear Adidas, agitated Adidas. If any of you don't know what an Adidas sounds like, I'm going to ask my friend, desperate Darby and his mates to give an example. Darby? <laughs> That's right. When you hear that word, I want to hear 250 of those ones. At the AGM last year, we replaced the existing bird life constitution with a new one. It involved dissolving the council, which had previously met twice a year, with an executive board, which thenceforth, thenceforth met monthly. Uh, with a board of directors, which fulfilled the function that you would ordinarily expect from a board of directors more professional and we hope more organized. In addition, we began to set in motion a formal and vigorous performance management system. That involved several phases. It involved, this is after March last year, it involved focusing clearly on the organization's vision and mission, thereafter setting key areas against which we would measure performance or failure on a quarterly basis, on an annual basis. In other words, we had to get hold of bird life and figure out on an ongoing basis how we were performing and fulfilling our function. So it involves several phases. The process is written in the annual report which you have before you. Because we only introduced this in the middle of the year, this year has necessarily been slightly truncated. It will be bigger and better and more organized next year. It involves us focusing on the vision and mission, and that's critical. Unless we know what we're doing, why we're here, what we're about, we're really floundering around. We then have tools for measuring on an ongoing basis how we're performing. On a quarterly basis, the executive board in the individual members complete a detailed questionnaire focusing on dozens of core areas, key areas, which are important to not only our conservation success, but business probity as well. As Mark said, BirdLife International regard us as a key partner. They also regard us as one of the better organized and compliant BirdLife partners in terms of governance, transparency and accountability. Very, very important. Um, so on a quarterly basis from now on, we review the work that we've done against those key areas to review our performance against uh, what we should be doing. In other words, we're after performance measurement, governance, transparency, and ultimately greater success, both in the conservation area and in how we run what has morphed from a fairly small NGO over the last decade or so into a fairly substantial business. The process also involves a self-appraisal by the board. Individual board members now, on a regular basis, review those key areas and judge the board in terms of how we have performed. It's a rigorous, comprehensive, detailed process. You will find in your annual report a note from the governance committee, the board measures its, itself and then reports to the governance committee which does an audit and a review and verifies that. 
We don't do it ourselves. The final piece of the appraisal, we, is we also appraise our individual performances in terms of attending meetings, contributions, things like that. The final piece is when they ask me to leave the room and they talk about me for a short while. They haven't come back to me since the last appraisal, so I presume I'm doing a reasonable job. <laughs> We've made progress in that regard, but it's a work in progress. But I want you Bird Club affiliates and members to know how seriously the executive board, Mark and BirdLife, take the issues of performance, governance, and the fiduciary duty with which we are entrusted. These are non-negotiable imperatives. Another thing, by the way, the executive board meets once a month. Um, before I get there, the bird club to which I belong, and Beth Hackland will confirm this, place on the same level as conservation and biodiversity, having fun. And that's what we're doing this weekend as well. Having fun is absolutely important to what we do. At our meetings, I don't mind telling you, usually when we conclude our meetings, we end up with a little sing-along led by the baritone supreme, Darby. Uh, we oil our vocal cords with a bottle of wine. Not per person, between us. <laughs> but we have fun. And it's fabulous. <laughs> it wasn't very good. Uh, the second thing I want to do, and it's uh, just some comments, if I may. All about partnering. Partnering and partnerships, so, so important to the health of our organization. In the Royal Society of Protection, of Protection of Birds, we have a fantastic British partner, which gives us incredible support. They have over a million members. Imagine if we had a million members, how we could really knock conservation and biodiversity on the head, the difference we would make. They have a million members. We have fantastic support from BirdLife International, they both rate us in the top rank of birding organizations worldwide, and we're very proud of that, and we intend to continue and improve on that. We then have a great, we have great corporate and personal patrons and sponsors, many of them here today. Without them, without you, we would be but a shadow of our current self. There are then numerous other NGO friends, such as WWF South Africa, EWT, WESA, Sand Parks Honorary Rangers. We also partner with universities, such as the Percy Fitzpatrick Institute and the ADU at the University of Cape Town. We have good relationships with government departments and organs of state, such as the DEA and SANBI. Our staff are not just a partnership, they're a great family, a fabulous team. Then there are volunteers and helpers who give so freely of their time, talents, and funds. A relatively new partnership, all of three years old, is the BirdLife National Trust. My co-trustees, uh, all respected and renowned businessmen, David Lawrence at Investec, Michael Spicer, formerly Anglo-American, Hem Humphrey Borkham, formerly Janusburg Stock Exchange, my co-trustees and Mark, are determined to build and grow that trust into an entity which can provide a solid financial base for bird life going into the future. We've made great strides. Isdell House, the property and building reside in that trust. Uh, it's worth, we gather, over 14 million rand. It's a magnificent head office and hardly any of the funds, money, which went into that development, hardly any at all thousand or so at the most came from our conservation funds. The rest was from donors, sponsors, patrons, many, many of them. Last but most important is our partnership with our direct members and our affiliated bird clubs. I remind the board every time we meet how critically important it is for us to foster relationships and communication with bird clubs and our direct members. And we do 
have a substantial network in place, internet based, etc., where we accomplish that. Another bit of partnering is that between the board and myself and the chief executive. And I can tell you, it's a great partnership. We work well together, we perform well together, and we do, and the chief executive, as you know, doing a great job. Uh, I work with Mark on a daily basis. We communicate frequently. Um, as those of you know, those of you who know Mark will know, communicating with him means seven days a week, 24 hours a day. He and I squabble a bit every now and again, but he eventually comes around to my way of thinking and agrees. <laughs> the reason I mention all of this partnering and it's my final comment, in the face of the constant and increasing threats from numerous quarters to our precious birds and their habitats, it's a great comfort to us to know that our work is supported by such a wonderful web of connections, partnerships, and supporters. We have still have further items on the agenda, that's all I wish to say. Thank you. You, so far at least, have been a great audience, congregation, and parliament of wise owls. You're a fabulous audience. Thank you. <laughs> the next item on the agenda, after all that fun and games, something a little more prosaic and cerebral, I'd last like to ask our financial manager, Barney Duplessis, to present the annual accounts and the treasurer's report. Hi, everyone. Um, unfortunately, our treasurer, um, Mike McCullough, can't be here today, so I will be presenting the uh, his report on his behalf. Um, I'm pleased, um, and if you can't see properly on the slides, they are reflected on page 28 in your annual report, uh, report so you can also look at them. <coughs> so we're starting with the income statement. I'm pleased to report that despite tough economic times, the organization has achieved a net operating income for the sixth year running. The net income from operations for the year ended 31 December 2015 amounts to 491,000, compared to 891,000 for the 2014 year. I would like to express our gratitude towards all donors who have ensured that the organization's administrative expenses were once again covered by and large. The net operating income for the year effective, effectively arises from the following. Firstly, investment income. Uh, in 2015, this was 849,000 compared to 732,000 in 2014. Membership. Uh, this year it was 276,000, a little bit down from last year, which was 539,000. The main reason for the reduction was a decrease in corporate and conservation league members. Publications, uh, the figures in 2015 was, was 47,000, compared to 130,000 in 2014. The main reason for the uh, decrease there in the income from publications is just an increase in the um, design costs and all the operating costs of the magazine. All activities mentioned above are ultimately aimed at supporting bird loss of Africa's main objective, which is the conservation of our country's birds and their habitats. Most of the, cons uh, the organization's conservation programs and project projects were sufficiently, sufficiently funded during the year. Total revenue for projects increased from 13.7 uh, million in 2014 to 16.3 million for the year under review. The Wackerstrom Center continues to incur losses due to the absence of suitable funders. Total gross income increased from 22.2 million in 2014 to 25, uh, 26 million basically for the year under review. Birdlife South Africa remains very grateful to all owners, irrespective of the value of the donation. Additional to the net income from operations, the surplus on the sale of investments and also the sale of our Lewis, Lewis House property re reduced by the donation to the BirdLife National Trust resulted in a net income for 2015 
of 524,000 compared to 1.2 million in 2014. Look at the balance sheet, the financial position. The financial position for the organization remains healthy. The ratio of current assets versus current liabilities has remained stable since the 2014 year of assessment. Current assets mainly comprises of cash and cash equivalents and are efficient to cover current liabilities, mainly comprising of funding received in advance. Accumulated, accumulated funds for the year under review has grown slightly from prior year to just under 10 million. This mainly consists of retained income to the value of 1.1 million um, and just about 6 million in sustainability fund and the excess of the market value of investments over initial cost of 2.6 million. The financial statements for the year uh, ending 31 December 2015 have been audited by KPMG and approved by the executive board. I thank KPMG again for their services and appreciate the cordial relationships that exist for the advice uh, and for the advice received from them during the year. The financial statements that was audited by them uh, has been on our website for a week, so I hope some of you that wanted to had a, uh, was in a position to go and look at them. So I just want to ask at this stage if there's any questions regarding the finances. Thanks. If there's no questions, then I will propose that the financial statements for BirdLoss South Africa for the year ending 31 December 2015 be adopted by members. Thanks, Jeff. Over there. And uh, yeah, the next point then is appointment of auditors. Thanks. <coughs> Thank you, Fani. Uh, as Mark said earlier, we really are grateful that after several years, going back several years, mm -hmm. after several years of losses and struggling finances, uh, and in essence, it's been since Mark joined us, uh, when with the help of certain wonderful friends, we've got the finances back in shape to the point where we are making surpluses every year. Um, we can't have to make too much. We squirrel it away wherever we can. But as our auditors keep on telling us, there's nothing wrong with making profits, even though we're an NGO. The receiver of revenue does not expect us to make losses, so he doesn't mind if we make modest profits and uh, put it away to reserves. Thank you for that, Fani. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the organization's auditors for several years have been KPMG. Uh, the partner there who oversees our auditors, is Mike Evans, who does fantastic work for us and is a great friend. Uh, they have agreed to continue to serve as auditors, so I should like to record, it should be a formal vote and the secretary will record it thus, but I'd like to record your agreement that we again appoint KPMG as our auditors for the following year. Also, and I'm doing this a little informally, I will, you'll also record your approval, not only of the chief executive's report, but of the financial report as well. There is one further address to come, and we look forward to that. It will be the citation uh, for the Gill Memorial Medal Award before we get there, there are a few basic housekeeping items, if I may deal with them quickly. Uh, and that's item nine, nomination of election and election of office bearers. Firstly, the honorary president, Phoebe Barnard, has served with great distinction for the last four years. And she's been a wonderful help and inspiration to us. She has, um, she has come to the end of her term of office. So Phoebe will be standing down. Um, in terms of the Constitution, we called for nominations of for president for the following four years. Mark, is this supposed to come up on the screen? No. We have one nomination uh, as honorary president for the next four years, and that's Colleen Downs, who's sitting right at the back, I think. There she is, smiling at me. We have one nomination as president, Colleen Downs, and uh, with your approval, those of you members who are able to vote, may I please accept that? Nominated by Von Pennington and seconded by Darby Chamberlain. Thank you. We 
also require a new honorary treasurer, Mike McCulloch, uh, who's not here today. He's relocated to Cape Town, has served as honorary treasurer with great distinction and help for many years. He's been a huge help to the organization. He has also stepped down and once again, nominations uh, were called for. Uh, we received one nomination as honorary treasurer and that is Tony Zogby, who is known to many of you. Uh, he was nominated by one Pennington, again seconded by Darby Chamberlain. So with your agreement, we have a new honorary treasurer as from this annual general meeting and that's Tony Zogby. And there's, there's one item not for voting on, but for noting. Uh, we have three regional forums, and each regional forum is entitled to nominate one representative to the Executive Board of BirdLife South Africa. They are our essential link, our first link with the affiliated clubs. Vernon Head, uh, who was, was my predecessor as chairman, had represented the West, West Cape Bird Forum. Uh, for many years, uh, he has now stood down, and the forum uh, has nominated Mark Brown in his stead. So that is not for voting on it; it's for noting we have a new board member uh, who I think is in the audience, Mark. No, uh, but that is for noting. Item ten. We're really getting through this sort of pace. Uh, is the launches of certain initiatives and publications, and Mark Anderson will deal with that. Thank you. Thanks very much, Roger. I think um, before we go to this uh, little section of the, um, the agenda for the AGM, Colleen, maybe you'd like to stand. I don't know if everybody's seen who you are and knows who you are, and most people know who you are. <laughs> Colleen is a professor at the University of KwaZulu Natal. She um, does a lot of really interesting work on birds. Um, I've known her for a very long time. I have an uncompleted PhD. When my PhD supervisor passed away, she was sort of took over as my PhD supervisor. That's never been written up, so maybe uh, we should work on that while you're president, <laughs> Colleen. <laughs> that would be a challenge. And then, um, for those who don't know Tony Zogby, I think a lot of you know Tony. Tony, you're there. Tony, stand up so we can all see. <laughs> Tony is um, a partner at Deloitte. He's also um, treasurer of the Sandbox Honorary Rangers West Rand region. He's uh, very involved in the Honorary Rangers work. Um, his partner, um, Lorna, is the um, daughter of Ian White, <laughs> the famous uh, Kruger scientist who addressed us uh, yesterday morning, or day before yesterday morning. So, um, Tony, we look forward to working with you. I know Fani does in particular, so welcome to the team, both of you. Thank you. On the agenda of these uh, meetings is just the launch of initiatives and publications, um, something I think Vernon asked for in the past. Bird of the year this year is the sociable weaver. Um, for those who've never traveled to the western parts of the country, you won't know um, that bird and um, build the largest bird nest in the world. We've developed um, lots of materials around Bird of the Year 2016, including a poster which was distributed in the, um, the March-April issue of African BirdLife magazine. Um, if you don't have a copy and like a copy, Shireen has a whole lot of copies at the back of the room. You can pick up a copy from her there. We have lots of copies at the office. Um, if you have a home for a copy, and a home means a school classroom wall or a library wall, we'd love you to come and collect some or ask them for us to ask us to post them to you so we can distribute these posters around the country so people can become more aware of Bird of the Year. There's also Bird of the Year pin badges. Um, which are available from the um, BirdLife South Africa desk in the foyer. We've also developed um, lesson plans and crosswords and puzzles and all sorts of other um, activities for children. Those have been available on our website as from this morning. I've got an email from Nikki, and those will be distributed widely um, to schools. Of course, we also um, include an article on the Bird of the Year in every issue of our magazine. And um, Peter Ryan's team at the Fitzpatrick Institute are helping us with a lot of these materials. The bird of the year next year um, to announce is going to be the lapid faced vulture. We did, it was a bit of a toss up between the Tulliver and the vulture. <laughs> vulture one in the end. We actually asked for nominations for bird of the year. Um, we asked the club's members, staff for nominations. We got some really, really good nominations this year. Um, African black oyster catcher, um, 
I think what some of the others were, there was um, two nominations for vultures, there were a few other nominations. What we then do is our marketing committee, which meets monthly, um, review these nominations and we decide on which is the most appropriate species, taking a whole lot of factors into account. You know, was the previous bird of the year a big bird? Was the previous bird of the year a common bird or a threatened bird? Um, are there any strategic reasons why we need that specific species in the following year's bird of the year? We then make a, take a proposal to the executive board and, um, and they say yay or nay. So next year's um, bird of the year is the leopard faced vulture. I think we all know it. Some of you have probably seen them this week. Charismatic species, um, characteristic species, well known, easily identifiable, an ambassador for other vultures. Um, as we will know, four species of African vultures were uplisted to critically endangered last year, end of last year, um, so globally critically endangered. I think we can use the opportunity next year with leopard faced vulture as the bird of the year to try and raise awareness about the plight of our continent's vultures. BirdLife International is also going to be putting increased emphasis on the conservation of vultures across the continent. Lots of money is being raised. Um, three gala dinners in Japan, the third of which um, was last week, which Peter Sullivan attended. And uh, millions of rands are being raised to undertake important vulture conservation work in Africa. And I think this could be one of our contributions as BirdLife South Africa to BirdLife International's um, work um, to conserve um, the vultures across the continent. So next year you'll be hearing a lot more about the leopard face vulture. I'd like to encourage our members and bird clubs to continue to nominate birds of the year when we call for nominations because we do spend a lot of time reviewing those nominations and at, at times it's really difficult. This last occasion I know we had lots of debate, extensive debate. Um, Mel Tripp, Vernon Head, um, our ad agency, uh, Utopia, Fani Duplessis, our events manager Nikki McCartney and, and our Emma Askes and Siobhan Anagia all involved and we looked at the pros and cons of which species is the most appropriate for bird of the year. Okay, the next point is the uh, checklist. Um, we launch our checklist, our bird checklist at each AGM. Um, this is I think the sixth, let me have a look here quickly. The seventh consecutive annual checklist that we've been produced, sponsored by Zeist. We're very grateful for the sponsorship. Um, Craig, are you? Yeah, Craig Smith from Zeist. No. I've actually asked this every day this week, and he's out birding, testing those new Zeist uh, binoculars, I think. Um, and um, Gail Jadani, the MD of Zeist, is she? Yeah. Gail? No, not yet. Okay. But we're really grateful to Zeiss for the support. I, I have regular interaction with um, Gail, the MD of Zeiss, and she says we need to write up this as a case study, the relationship with BirdLife South Africa and Zeiss. Zeiss became involved seven years ago through the then MD Daniel Sims. They've actually seen a, an increase in binocular sales during these seven years, and they feel they can attribute it to the relationship that they've had with BirdLife South Africa. So the 2016 checklist has been produced. Um, there's a sociable weaver on the cover, the bird of the year is always on the cover of the checklist. There's been a few changes to the, um, the list um, as of 2016. Um, Snowy egret has been added to the list. Um, we uh, now have 847 bird species in South Africa. There's been six changes to scientific names. There's been a few red data book status changes, especially for the vultures, as you know, four species are listed to critically endangered. The, Checklist was distributed in the January, February issue of African BirdLife magazine. We do have other copies. Um, Shireen, where are you? Have you? I think there are copies at the back. You could just chat to Shireen if you'd like um, copies of um, the checklist. Now, this is a South African checklist. Now, everybody has Southern African lists. We're a very patriotic organization. We want to know how many birds we have in our country. We know we have 847 bird species in South Africa. Okay, that's what the inside of the checklist looks like. Um, the list is compiled um, by the BirdLife South Africa List Committee under the leadership of Dr. Chris Lutz. And we'd like to thank Chris um, from Bidding Equators for all his support. And the committee has a complement of 14 people. A number of them are sitting in this room. So thanks very much for everybody for their contributions. Um, once at work, Afrikaans have a funny checklist. Um, and my Disney um, um, net in PDF format. And it can afkalai word van ons wetblad sê. Who is my Afrikaans? <laughs> 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 uh, 
a group. Um, maybe I should switch to English. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a group called the Afrikaans Full Nam Group. Um, it's a committee of 11 people under the chairmanship of Dr. Monet de la Rey. And they um, help us produce this Afrikaans checklist. Unfortunately, we don't have a sponsor to, to print a copy of the checklist, but it is available on our website in uh, PDF format. Um, Ernst Stratif and Hanlin Swift Robinson also quite involved in um, the production of this um, checklist. So um, if anybody knows of a sponsor, we'd love to be able to produce an Afrikaans checklist as well. In fact, not only an Afrikaans checklist, we'd love to have checklists in other South African languages. How nice would it be to have a checklist in Setswana and Sepedi and Zulu and, and other African languages? Okay, the last thing I have to say, Mr. Chairman, is about future flocks. Um, we have a flock next year, and we've been working on this flock for a, a while. And in fact, it's been quite tricky for the flock organizing committee to simultaneously organize two flocks, and it was with great relief our last flock organizing committee meeting that we put this flock to bed. And uh, now we only have one flock to focus on, which is Flock at Sea again, 2017. And we are going to sea next year, 24th to the 28th of April, um, 2017. You remember we did a similar trip in March 2013. We went up the coast in the fog to Volfus Bay. This time we're going to avoid the fog. We're heading south to the edge of the continental shelf. And Ross tells me, it's one of the prime seabirding areas in the world. I look forward to this trip. Ross has promised to teach me the difference between a wandering albatross and a Cape Gannet. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> not, not <laughs> We'd like to encourage those who haven't booked a cabin to do so. Um, as of yesterday, Gisela Ortner, our star volunteer on our flock organizing committees, told me that we now have 1,601 birders on the cruise, and I think it's 587 cabins booked or something. We've got about another 177 cabins to go to make sure that this is an exclusive birding trip. So it is exclusive in the fact that we are going to the edge of the continental shelf on a row route that has been determined by Ross and Trevor Hodecker and others, but we still don't have con full control of the program. So we may want to ditch the comedy hour and the cabaret, or maybe schedule it for different types of the day. So we want to ensure that we have all cabins um, taken up by birders. So please, um, if you haven't booked, um, now's the opportunity. Unfortunately, MEC has a dynamic pricing policy, so the prices of the berths are not as cheap as they were a year ago. <clears throat> Ross, Gisela, and a couple of others and I went onto the ship a few weeks ago in Durban, and we met with a captain. He's very happy with the route. He's also proved the fact that we can chum from the ship. So we're going to be taking a couple of tons of chum. Um, if the weather's suitable, we will be chumming for seabirds. Um, we also have Peter Harrison, the world's expert on seabirds, joining us in the cruise again. And he will be lecturing together with a num another number of other um, lecturers. So um, watch this space. Flock 2018 is still undecided. There's, still a, there's been a proposal or two, and the Flock Organizing Committee will be evaluating those proposals to determine where Flock will be held in 2018. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. But before I get to the Gill Memorial Award, um, the item on the agenda says that we've come to the end of the formal agenda and business. Under any other business, is there anything which anybody would like to say or raise? Nope. In which case, can I call upon Phoebe again? Fabulous Phoebe. <laughs>